Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is Upland Game Biologist R.J. Grouse. Uh, in previous webcasts, we've covered the grouse and partridge season previews. This week, we're just going to focus on pheasants. You guys just finished your summer pheasant brood counts. What are the prospects for this fall? Well, there's good and bad news. Um, good news is we saw more young compared to last year, and we have a bigger average brood size. Uh, bad news is overall pheasants per 100 miles was down slightly, just 2%, which is you know, relatively unchanged compared to last year. So numbers are down from last year. Yep, like I said, we, from our brood surveys, we look at three indexes. And when I say index, you know, it's not a total population count. Basically, we count from year to year, and we can compare those two. Um, we use pheasants, total pheasants per 100 miles. Uh, that was down, like I said, 2%, um, relatively unchanged. Um, then we use the broods that we see per 100 miles. And that was exactly the same as last year, um, which sounds bad, but it's encouraging just because last year we had zero production. Um, so we had less adults coming into this season. So, and so that translates into there was actually more young that we observed on the surveys, and that came out. And it also came out, the third index that we use is average brood size. And that was up 27% from last year. So that just shows us better, pheasants had a better time out there producing this year, had better conditions, obviously, as compared to the drought of 2017. So things are encouraging in that aspect. Is your summer brood surveys for pheasants, is that the only way you guys get a good handle on pheasant numbers? Yep, that, that's, our, that's our biggest one. You know, we have right around 100 routes that we run every, every year. Um, throughout the state, we have biologists and game wardens help out. Um, go out right away at sunrise, drive your 20 miles real slow. Every time you see a brood, you get out, uh, clap your hands, stomp your feet, kick them up, count them, age them. And like I said, that's a, our index that we use compared to year to year to basically give an idea of what the fall season is going to look like. Okay, last summer was very dry. Last winter wasn't too bad. Yep. We had some spring rains. Yep. How do these weather patterns affect pheasants and pheasant chicks? Yeah, I mean, you know, weather is an important factor. You know, like, you know, we've been driving it in it last year. You know, was, we had zero production. There was no in insect production with that dry weather, so the chicks' survivability was very low. Um, it's a welcome, good winter um, that should have brought the hens through in better condition. Uh, with that, they can have better clutch size, and that seems to come out. You know, we had um, larger average brood size this year compared to last year, and it was right along with our 10-year average that we looked at, because we've been doing these surveys since 1964, so we have a really good long-term data set. Um, so it's good to see the brood, average brood size coming back up to, you know, 10 years ago we had a lot more pheasants on the landscape compared to now, so it's, it's encouraging. Um, some parts of the state, you know, that drought still had the effect, that's why we had you know, the 2% decline in total pheasants that we saw. We saw uh, less adults compared to 2017. Makes sense, a pheasant lives two years. We had zero production last year. They barely replaced themselves. And you lose a percentage of your pheasants every year, regardless uh, severity of winter. So it's definitely encouraging coming in th that we had this increase in brood size so they can replace themselves a little bit. And from that drought, there was lack of residual cover this spring. Um, when a hen right away wants to go nest, you know, middle of May, um, a lot of that cover wasn't there for just because everything either didn't grow or was hayed last year. Um, but we did get those good timely spring rains that stuff greened up, grew up, and a lot of the, I think, second and third nest attempts is what's going to come out of this year. Because um, even in the surveys, like I, said, I mentioned that we age the pheasants, um, downy, quarter, half grown, and full grown. Um, three, three quarter grown and later in the year we had a lot more downy and quarter grown pheasants that were coming out of the survey. So that's encouraging that there were some re-nesting attempts too. Okay. Uh, pheasant numbers have been sliding downward for about the last decade. Mm -hmm. What's it going to take for the rebound? Patience, um, you know, a little bit of good luck. You know, we're going to need, you know, a few good winters in a row and a couple good more of these good production years. Um, Pheasants, you know, they can rebound in a hurry if the conditions are right. And, you know, like I always say, you know, habitat is a driver for everything. Um, when you look back, you know, pheasants, you know, all the way back to the sod saver days and, 
um, soil bank and CRP years, as grassland acres are up, so are pheasants. They go down, yeah, pheasants go down as well. So, you know, it'll take, you know, the upcoming farm bill is going to be important to see what comes out of there, see if there'll be more funding, more, more things available for CRP acres. With the low pheasant populations, we've been getting a lot of questions. Why don't we lower the limit, the yep. daily limit? Yep. Is that something that would improve populations? It, uh, you biologically, it would not. You know, we only shoot males, we shoot roosters, the hens are the driver for the population. Um, again, it'll be more, you know, we need more of the habitat, more winter habitat, nesting cover, things like that. Okay, uh, obviously no changes this year, but is that something we would think about in the future? Mm -hmm. It is, you know, we're open to talking about, you know, if we have more severe weather events, bad production, um, we're open to talking about it and I encourage people to come out to your advisory board meetings, you know, or call us up. Um, but again, in the years that we had increase and decrease, um, you know, in the 90s we did it a few times, there was never a significant impact in harvest or number of, of hunters. It's more of a social issue. Um, it would spread out opportunity uh, to different people. You know, the bag limit, say, goes down to two. More people would have the opportunity to go out and get their two pheasants. Um, but like I said, you know, again, we only shoot roosters. It's not biologically going to magically produce more pheasants next year if we reduce the bag limit to two or, you know, if we, if we increase it on good years, things like that. Okay. Is there any parts of the state that in your surveys that showed to be better than other parts? Mm -hmm. Yep, the northwest and the southeast had better production this year as compared to last year. Uh, the northeast was up quite a bit. However, that's that's not really our traditional pheasant area. A lot of that is kind of south towards I-94, Stutzman, uh, Barnes County, things like that. But they had a they had a, a nice increase in the amount of pheasants that we saw. Um, and then our you know where. Our hot spot, the southwest, um, had another bad year. They, that was where the drought was the worst. Uh, so the re residual cover there was, was very below average. Um, like I said, though, they got early rains, and everything was looking good. And then right at peak hatch, we got two very bad severe weather hail events um, that basically took out a lot of the pheasants. Silver lining is they were fairly narrow bands. Um, they still, they still had um, an increase in average brood size down there. And some of the surveys people saw a lot of, a lot of young and a lot of adults pheasants. So I guess this year's theme is going to be very localized. Um, when you find the pheasants, you're probably going to find a good amount and some young ones, uh, which is always good for hunters. Um, you know, last year we were hunting a lot of adults. Pheasants have already seen a hunting season. They're a little smarter to, yeah. to the ways of the hunters. There's still going to be pheasants out for pheasant hunters to find. Yep, there's still going to be pheasants. You know, like I said, in the decline in the southwest, that's still where most of the pheasants are going to be. Um, still probably where most of the hunters are going to be. But other areas like the northwest and the southeast, uh, people have a better time finding pheasants this year. It'll mm -hmm. still be a little hard. you have to walk a couple extra slews again, but there's, there's more young out there. Sure. And season opens October 6th. October 6th, yep. A lot of good information, RJ. Thank you. Yep, thank you. Time is running short. The nine and a half day youth deer season opens Friday, September 14th at noon. And if you're wondering why you haven't received your youth deer license, it's because you have not purchased the required general game and habitat license. Don't delay, it takes a couple days to receive the youth deer license in the mail. Go to the Game and Fish website, purchase your general game and habitat license, and then your deer license will be mailed. For Upland Game Biologist R.J. Gross and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.